In this worked example, I'm going to show you in detail how you might go about calculating the change in the expansion rate of the universe from supernova data. So let's imagine we found a whole bunch of supernovae, and for each one we know we measured its brightness against time, so the flux against time. And this will go up and come down, so we can measure the peak flux. And we can also measure how long it takes. So it's called delta M15 typically, which is how long it takes to be over a certain brightness. And that correlates with luminosity. So once you know that, you've got the luminosity. Also, you can measure a spectrum. So flux against wavelength. And the spectrum will have bumps and wiggles in it. And by looking at the wavelengths of these, comparing with what you did in the lab, you can measure the redshift Z. So for each supernova, you know three things. You know the peak flux, the luminosity, and the redshift. So how do you go from that to have a plot of something like scale factor of the universe against time to see whether it's expanding at a uniform rate or speeding up or slowing down? Well, the redshift, if you remember, the scale factor of the universe is just equal to 1 over 1 plus the redshift. So as we know the redshift, we can calculate the scale factor very easily. What we don't know, so that gives us this axis here, what we don't know is the time, and that's a tricky bit. Now if we know how far away something is, so here's the Earth, and here's your supernova. If we know the distance d here, then the time, how long the light's been travelling, is going to be distance divided by the speed of light. So that's time measured back from the present. So if we say that this is the present day, it's this time here. So measured backwards, which causes some confusion. But having worked out the distance, well, we can use the inverse square law. So we know that flux is equal to the luminosity divided by 4 pi d squared. Now, I'm actually glossing over several things here. Um, first of all, you have to allow for the photons getting stretched as they travel. We'll come back to that later. Uh, secondly, you have to allow for the curvature of space-time, which means that the area of a, s a sphere is not quite 4 pi d squared. You have to wonder what exactly do you mean by distance, because space is expanding. Distance is smaller when the light sets out than when it reaches us. Also, you can never actually measure the flux at all wavelengths and the luminosity at all wavelengths. What you're always measuring is the flux at a particular wavelength, and the particular wavelength changes depending on how far away things are going, which you have to correct for. It's called k-corrections, and there's a whole course in its own right. But for the purposes of this course, those are complexities we won't worry about. We'll just use this. So we know f, we know l, so if we multiply both sides by d squared, we get that d squared equals l over 4 pi f. So I've moved the f down there and the d squared up here. Take the square root, and we get that d equals the root l over 4 pi f. So this gives us a scale factor. If we divide this by c, that gives us the time before the present, so this time here, equals that. So we know the x and y axis, and we can plot a bunch of points. Present day, we've got points, and we'll see what we can see, whether it goes accelerating or decelerating.